I have many big plans. Mm -hmm. I want to show my sport to the world. I want it to be entertaining. At 27, it's not surprising to learn that Noah Lyles has huge plans for the future, both on and off the track. He may have added two Olympic medals to his growing collection, but that isn't the end of the road or the race to the top for him. Lyles is nothing if not unpredictable, especially with what comes out of his mouth. In fact, no one could probably have predicted that his favorite medal from the Paris Olympics would be the 200-meter bronze instead of the 100-meter gold. To be fair, it was truly a momentous win, given that he had COVID when he ran the 200-meter race and finished third. He knew that it wouldn't be easy, but he was determined to run his best nevertheless. And he's not lying. After all, he is used to battling against the odds, used to dealing with the types of setbacks that can be devastating for a high-level sprinter. I grew up with asthma my whole life, he explained. I've dealt with ADHD, dyslexia, extreme allergies, almost every sickness you can think of and still prevailed. Granted, this challenge was different. This was the race he was supposed to win, the race he cut his teeth on, the race in which he was the third fastest runner of all time. As he sprinted around the half lap distance in the Stade de France, Lyle Zia somehow found the energy to finish. Although it was quite obvious that victory was beyond his reach, the bronze medal he won before collapsing on the track and being whisked away in a wheelchair was, arguably, the greatest achievement of his life. Put it that way, it's no wonder the American track star considers the 200-meter bronze his favorite medal so far. Lyles' story is one that he will probably tell for years to come. As a matter of fact, it is already being told in the Netflix documentary Sprint where his larger-than-life personality has made him one of the main characters in the popular series. The first season of the series was released shortly before the Summer Games. It revealed how Lyles, one of several athletes featured across the six episodes of Sprint, overcame serious health concerns in his teens to become the poster boy for sprinting. Being part of Sprint was an incredible experience, said Lyles. When I imagined the day where a docu-series would be created, I didn't always envision me being the first person it would be about. Sprint, the world's fastest humans, follow seven athletes in their competitive journey to the 2024 Paris Olympic Games, including Lyles and compatriot Shakari Richardson, along with several Jamaican sprinters, among others. Now that the Paris Olympics has been concluded, a second season of the series is set to be released. The Netflix documentary series Sprint will return for season two, with a focus on Noah Lyles, Gabby Thomas, and other members of the World Athletics contingent from the 2024 Olympics. Netflix announced recently that the second season will premiere on November 13th. Following athletes from all over the world, this series delves deep into the psyches of those elite competitors who train to be the fastest person on the planet. The show's synopsis states, we take an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at the high stakes and mental toughness of the sprinters who devote their entire lives to crossing the finish line in record time, where their professional futures are decided in just fractions of a second. Season 2 will cover the Olympic trials through the 2024 Paris Games on more than 12 stars from around the world in their quest to make history. What wasn't shown in the series, though, was how Noah Lyles was raised. Lyles has previously revealed that he grew up in a cult. In an episode of the Everybody Wants to Be Us podcast, the 27-year-old athlete spoke candidly about his unorthodox upbringing, revealing that he grew up in a super strict church environment before his family moved to North Carolina. It was super strict. All moms had to be homeschooling their kids, and the father was the head of the household, he explained. His parents Kevin Lyles and Keisha Kane eventually decided to take their family out of that environment, he said, and they moved to North Carolina, only to find that the local church there also practiced similar tactics. This experience messed up Lyles's and his mother's views on being a part of a church, he said. But while they struggled to put their faith in an organized church, Lyles said that his mom still practices her faith and that her commitment to do so inspired him to do the same. Having instilled that in us at a young age, it made it easier for me to go throughout my own journey," Lyles added. 
After learning this, it is a little easier to understand why Noah Lyles is as outspoken as he is. This had been observed again recently in relation to Miami Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill. The professional football player has taken aim at Noah Lyles, challenging the 100-meter Olympic gold medalist to a race. The Speedy Hill apparently wasn't impressed with Lyles' win in the men's 100-meter final at the Paris Olympics, and he took exception on the Up and Adams podcast to Lyles, saying Super Bowl champions were not world champions. As you can probably remember, it was a dig the sprinter previously leveled at NBA champions as well. Lyles, of course, was up for the challenge. He we can race. If, he, if he's serious about it, if he's truly serious about it, I'm not talking about you just talking on the internet and you ain't actually coming to me and right. talking to my agent and saying, let's set something up. You are seriously about it. He didn't fail to sneak in a dig at the football player either. Salute. All right. Most we'll see you down the road. Good luck. Hey, you got any meets coming up? Are you done for this I'm, year? You I'm done for this year, man. I'm shutting it down. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Best of luck, bro, and uh, congratulations on the 100-meter goal, the bronze in the 200-meter. This clip has, to no one's surprise, spread wide and far on the internet. Hill himself retweeted the clip with the caption, sign the contract and lock in that 50-yard race. A lot of people found this funny. One user commented, 50 yards, run the 100-meter you challenged him, while another said, 50? Dude is making up distances. Another even outright called him a coward, 50 yards? You scared, bro, the comment read. While Lyles said he's confident he'd beat Hill at a shorter distance, such as 50 yards, or the NFL metric of 40 yards, he insisted he'd race only at 100 meters. Again, I'm not here to do gimmicks, Lyles said. You want to challenge me, the world's fastest man. If you want to challenge that, you have to challenge that in his event. So, although Lyles is game to race Hill, he's not doing it for cheap and he's doing it only under his rules. The three-time Olympic medalist and 100-meter gold medalist at the Paris Games responded to Hill's latest challenge to a foot race. I mean, if somebody wants to sponsor the event, and we're racing for millions of dollars, and it's on a track, and we're running 100 meters, then sure, we can race, Lyles told NBC News. But it has to be legit. I'm not here to do gimmicks. You're racing against a guy who has worked his whole life to get the title of the world's fastest man, and you've worked to be a great football player. You can't just jump the line because you're a great football player. Granted, Hill is widely viewed as the fastest player in the NFL, yes, but can he go against the unofficial world's fastest man? So the question of the hour is, is this race actually going to happen? Well, it's unlikely since Hill is in the midst of training camp and isn't likely to get the green light from the Dolphins to risk injury by running in extracurricular activities. Also, Hill doesn't stand a reasonable chance, especially within the 100-meter parameter Lyles has set. Again, Hill, who ran track at Oklahoma State, undeniably possesses elite speed, but football speed and track speed are two separate entities, so that's that. Make sure to be updated on the Paris Olympics highlights by watching this.